This video contains flashing lights, scary and creepy content, disturbing violent and graphic images, jump scares, pop-ups and sudden loud noises. Viewer discretion advised. Ever since video gaming became popular in the 70s and 80s, there have been creepy occurrences, hoaxes, glitches, and finally, creepy pastas about the strange realm of video games. They have been around for a long time, and no matter how much we say it's just a game, it still finds a way to creep themselves back into our mind and present us with an unnerving experience after the game is turned off. Now, we are giving you our list of the top 22 gaming creepypastas. Unknown Format Unknown Format is a creepypasta which is about how the player rips his friend's game collection and uses a torrent to download and mount the games. However, when he switches the computer to a Japanese language, all the games he plays turns into a nightmarish vision of their former selves. To top it off, this gameplay causes the player to start going insane by some of the imagery as in place in the story. This may not be the most famous or popular creepypasta you can find, but in my opinion, it's told in a new perspective that is not commonly used in creepypastas. And that is what makes it so perfectly haunting. JVK1166Z.ESP JVK is a creepypasta based on the game Morrowind. According to this creepypasta, if you start the game, it will crash, so you need to load it up in DOSBox. When you launch the EXE, you'll start off in a new game where all the main characters have been killed, causing the game to be unbeatable. As you wander around the sandbox, you'll notice a weird in-game creature called the Assassin that follows the player, watching you and doing generally creepy things. If you stand idle, you'll lose health, and during the whole duration of the game, you will constantly be losing health. Once the player is dead, it's said that the Assassin crawls all over the player's body and lets out a menacing screech. The Hall of Tortured Souls From as far back as the early 90s, the development teams at Microsoft have been slipping easter eggs into their software. Microsoft Office is very notable for this. In the 97 edition, a rudimentary flight simulator, pinball game, and magic 8-ball were hidden inside of Excel, Word, and Access, respectively. Then there's Excel 95, whose developers hit a creepy maze game called The Hall of Tortured Souls. The title alone would be bad enough, but they went further with the addition of low-resolution shots of the dev team plastered against garish red walls. Super Mario 64 Damned Super Mario 64 Damned is your standard creepy Mario pasta with a few things done right and a little differently. Basically, as the story goes, the player goes to the local game store and out of a pure nostalgia rush, he tries to get a Nintendo 64 and a few games for it. However, when he goes to buy it, the game owner gives it to them for free due to the complaints the old owners gave them about the game. They then head home and play it. And the creepy and gruesome events unfold. Luna Game our brony viewers may know about this one. The Luna game is a download that was uploaded by an unknown individual to the popular fan site Equestria Daily. 
When it was uploaded, it got a rather fast reaction to its scary jump scare content, and was taken down rather quickly. This led to EQD's new standard for submission. However, the damage was done, and the bronies who played are already scarred from the tormented soul of Apple Bloom that appears in the final splash page. Since the creation of Luna Game, there have been several more that have been released, but none have the initial scare factor that the first one had to offer. Hero Brine. Hero Brine, also known as Him, is believed to be the ghost of Minecraft creator Notch's brother. Pictures of Hero Brine began popping up in the late summer of 2010. The most well known and most common rendition of the rumor is that a gamer, while in single player, found an NPC with a default skin, but with white eyes. Following the encounter, strange occurrences started happening in this game, such as man-made objects appearing that he did not create, trees missing their leaves, perfect 2x2 two -two tunnels underground lit with redstone torches, and pyramids of sand in the ocean. Soon enough, more and more Hero Brine pictures were appearing on forums. Pretty soon, Notch tweeted about the subject saying, Hero Brine isn't real in any way. No, I never had a brother. Well, there's a half brother that I never met. But he's not in the game. That seemed to raise further questions, and more Hero Brine pictures continued to appear afterwards. The game developers even made a joke out of it and added removed Hero Brine at the end of some of the game's patch notes. We may never know if Hero Brian is a lost soul stuck in a video game or a hoax, but it keeps us interested. Pokemon Buried Alive Buried Alive is a supposed hidden code in the original Pokemon Red and Blue versions. It replaces Cubone's mother as the boss of Pokemon Tower in Lavender Town. A battle would commence and show a horrific model of a rotting corpse reaching out of the ground. Buried Alive uses a number of high levels, so the battle can be extremely tough. If the player loses the battle against Buried Alive, he will exclaim about raw meat, followed by several lines of gibberish before proceeding to drag the player underground with him. The game over screen shows Buried Alive holding the dead corpse of the player. You're here. The Theater The game in question is indeed called The Theater, and was developed by a company called Salida Software. This company made learning softwares, so The Theater was probably meant to be some sort of educational entertainment game. The game was obviously never finished, probably from the lack of funding or the whole company going under. Players talked about this game coming out at around the same time as Doom, back in 1993. Just like Killswitch, it was very obscure and very hard to find, and those who did have it denied playing it due to the disturbing nature of the game. There was also a few bootleg copies, but none were like the original claims. The game was set in a first-person perspective with flat sprites in a 3D environment that was extremely glitchy. The original idea was to select a movie from the posters on the wall, enter the theater, and play a minigame. But what's described in the story is what happens if you don't select a movie. If you continue to enter the theater without choosing a movie, odd, sometimes creepy things will happen 
Glitching past mini-games like this causes variables to reach values that weren't meant to, resulting in things appearing where they shouldn't. It is a very well-written pasta, and we suggest you give it a listen or a read. Kill Switch. Kill Switch is different from your standard creepypasta, in the sense that you can't reproduce it and you can't play it, but it's still pretty damn scary. Kill Switch, according to the pasta, was made by a small Czech company called Carvina Corporation. As soon as the game was completed, it erased itself, so it couldn't be played again. On top of that, there were only 5,000 copies ever made, so the game is non-existent nowadays. The game sounds rather fun with your choice of two different characters to lead through a haunted mine that just so happens to be infested with the dead, but sadly this pasta is simply not true. It was extremely well written by a professional writer with a tiny link to her site on the creepypastas page. Fallout 3 Number Station The Fallout 3 Number Station is a creepypasta about one of the number stations in the game. On this station, the voice actor of the radio station host, 3Dog, is heard reciting strange numbers and sentences, such as, Have you watched my YouTube videos yet? I uploaded myself kicking bombs in the nuts, followed by the numbers, Two four one six one two two four two zero one two. Other sentences said things like, The Queen has died today. The world mourns. As on days like these, we are all Brits. Followed by, Four two three one nine two zero one four. When looking at the numbers closer, it is shown that they are all actually dates. The most unnerving about this is 120552820110 or 12.05 May 28th, 2010. The date and time of the death of Gary Coleman. What does this mean about the other numbers then? It seems only time will tell. Misfortune.gb Misfortune.gb is about a haunted game for the 1989 Game Boy. The story behind the game is rather vague. You play the part of a little boy wandering around in a gothic building. While in the building, the player meets a strange being who is implied to be the devil himself. When the player meets this creature, a text box appears that says, I You're given the option to choose yes or no, and if you pick yes, then the creature responds with, then let's you will eventually come across a room containing four small cabins, and in this room a text box will appear that says, Choose wrong, and misfortune will be wrong in ones. Are you ready to play? If the player chooses the wrong cabin, the screen will cut to black, and then a high-resolution picture of the creature will appear above a text box that reads, I Many who have played this game have suffered from depression, become jittery in everyday life, and even committed suicide. People say that the game is still available through the internet. You can go ahead and play it if you want. <laughs> At your own risk, of course. Tales Doll Curse the Tails Doll is a mythical, demonic being that holds many gamers in its grip of fear. For those who don't know, the Tails Doll is a hidden character in the video game Sonic R 
an installment of the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise created by Sega Enterprises. Sonic R was the only game that ever had the Tails doll in it. The Tails doll looks somewhat different than its origin. It is, of course, a doll with a red gem affixed to its forehead. Supposedly, the curse of the Tails doll is that if you beat Sonic R completely, the Tails doll will jump out of your TV or spontaneously appear and kill you. Frequently, the song Can You Feel the Sunshine, in reverse, composed by Richard Jakes and sung by TJ Davis, appears in accounts of the doll. If you take one step deeper into the rumor than the surface of the creepy tale, you will discover that you have found an urban legend. Pokemon Creepy Black This creepypasta is about a bootleg Pokemon game. When starting up the game, nothing seems to be out of the ordinary. You get your typical Professor Oak speech, name yourself, and then go to Oak's lab to get your first Pokemon. Instead of just Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle, the player has the option to pick a fourth Pokemon called Ghost. Ghost is only level 1, with one move, Curse. The sprite of Ghost is also the same sprite as the ghosts you would normally see in Lavender Town. When going into battle with Ghost, no Pokemon could attack it. The game would say that they were too scared to move. When Ghost would use Curse, the screen would go black and the cry of your opponent's Pokemon would be heard. When the battle screen would return, the defending Pokemon would be gone, implying it had died. Once the player defeated the Elite Four, the game would fast forward many years later to an old man in Lavender Town, which is supposedly an older version of the player. The game would then enter battle mode where the player must fight with Ghost. Ghost would eventually win, killing the player. The game would then shut itself off and reset. NES Godzilla It details the events of what happens to a Godzilla fan who happened to gain a copy of NES Godzilla. The story begins with the player explaining how he recently bought an NES and was looking for a copy of Godzilla to relive some nostalgic memories. As he recalls his accounts of the game, the story goes from some odd experiences to a truly unnerving tale. Throughout his experience, he screenshots every creepy image that the game has to offer, such as weird and creepy looking enemies. The story even goes so far to say that he ended up putting it on eBay, and it's somewhere out there, where someone now can even play this disturbing game. Evil Auto Berserk in the 1980s, there was an arcade cabinet called Berserk. It was made and spawned a bit of controversy. Apparently, two people died at the ripe young ages after experiencing heart attacks. This, of course, was after they were able to post their high scores on the game cabinet. Now, as the story goes, Otto is one of the most evil characters in gaming history, as named by several different sites. This is due to the fact that he watches the player die with a smile on his face. However, Otto got his name from one of the developer's bosses, which is Otto, who used to chew people out on the job with a shit-eating grin on his face still. Now, rather this cabinet is cursed, or if it's just coincidence, Berserk and Evil Otto has made its mark on creepy gaming history. Mario Mario is a creepypasta about a strange hack that is completely surrounded in mystery, even to this day. 
The first user to try it reported that the compressed RAR file, simply named Mario, was very limited. He found a text file with nothing but nonsensical characters and a single repeated phrase, Find me. The game itself was not in a format that was available to play. After some adjustments, he managed to explore the chilling tale. When he started playing, he noticed some things out of the ordinary. For example, the opening message was altered. There was no enemies in sight and no music was playing. While going through the levels, each one became less colorful and message boxes quoting spiteful messages about Mario appeared. Many have speculated that the end of the short title is a representation of Mario's suicide and descent into a hell of his own making. All in all, it makes for an unnerving experience. When a player beat one of the castles, a message appeared highlighting some gruesome details about a certain victim. But the nightmare doesn't end there. When someone else on the forum returned to decode the text file, they discovered that it was instead an image. When they converted the text file to a JPEG, they found a frightening image. No one is entirely sure what the image is meant to represent. If the image was indeed a murder victim or a joke easter egg, the answer remains a mystery. Polybius Polybius is a theory that states that in the arcade age, there used to be an arcade cabinet called Polybius. People wanted to play this game so badly that they formed lines and even fights broke out over it. But why did the people of Portland, New Oregon want to play this game so badly? According to the Creepypasta, it is said that this was a part of a series of experiments done by the government in the same vein as MK Ultra. Some of the side effects of playing this game was close to that of LSD, which were night terrors, anxiety, insomnia, headaches, seizures, and depression, or became anti-gaming activist after playing it, but the story does not end there. The arcade owners claimed that men in black suits came into the arcade and collected data from the cabinets. This has led people to theorize that the government may have had a large involvement. And it's not that far off either, because the government made a deal with Atari, the makers of Battlezone, to help them make a special version to help them train troops months before Polybius came out which just adds to the possibility of government involvement. This theory has many aspects to it, such as Polybius has been in the Simpsons TV series, and the other possible theories that surround this game. Well, it just makes you think. Lavender Town Syndrome when the first copies of Pokemon Red and Green came out in Japan, children playing the game would be rushed to the hospital, and some would apparently commit suicide. This was because of a certain musical theme that played when the player would reach Lavender Town, a dark town with a tower full of graves. The original Lavender Town theme music was an M.I.D.I that was run on two channels called a binaural effect, so that children wearing headphones would hear one thing out of one ear and one out of the other. The two would theoretically combine in the brain to form a unique sound. The way the theme's multiple channels ran together, many children in the range 7 to 12 received migraine headaches. Eventually, it led to four deaths in children wearing headphones for an extended period of time. These deaths were caused by brain swelling, a heart attack, and two pain-induced suicides. Quick action by Nintendo Corporation and Game Freak got the product recalled within hours of the news. They dithered the track 
making it single-toned. The problems caused by an unexpected psychological effect have not occurred since. Red Dead Redemption Red Dead Redemption by Rockstar has some very creepy and deep quests and things that make you think. Red Dead Redemption has a few theories and some pretty creepy aspects about it. So let's start with a seemingly innocent newspaper that informs the player the abandoned town of Tumbleweed may be haunted. And after a personal exploration of the mansion, I've heard some creepy things such as footsteps, whispering, and a door that closes and opens upon itself. I've seen some creepy shadows and a weird tethered up skinny horse, as well as a few coffins in the basement. Could there have been a murder here? Maybe there's some more to this story than we thought. Upon further investigation, the church's lights are left on at night. On the altar, there's a statement written on the wood. The devil has gotten into the beast. Again, there must be more to what meets the eye in this creepy town, but we have barely scratched the surface of what this game has to offer, so we must move on. Now at this point, if you do not want spoilers, then end the video. For those of you who don't mind, then let's begin. There is a side quest in the game that is given to you by a mysterious stranger who claims to know you. This is important because in Red Dead's story, John Marston is gunned down in a heart-wrenching way. And after that's over, you can see the graves of John's wife, John's uncle, and John Marston himself. Three bullets, and three graves. Makes you think, doesn't it? Sonic .exe. Sonic.exe is one of the most famous and scariest creepypastas known among the gaming community. The story starts off with the player Tom receiving a disc from his friend Kyle, who he had not heard from in several weeks. It also contained a note saying, Destroy the disc. I, I, I couldn't get him. He's too fast for me. But due to being too big of a Sonic fan, to let go of the disc, he proceeds to play it, allowing his worst nightmares to come into fruition. The first thing he notices is when the first second when you press start, a twisted image of Sonic is seen with a dark grey sky and a blood red lake, with the writing SEGA 666 in the lower right hand side. As it continues, Sonic torches a player, taunting him with in-game levels, text, and gory dismemberment of poor woodland animals. The game Sonic.exe also has a fan-made port, which just looks like how it is on the creepypasta described it. It's also the video that you're seeing now. But no known copy of the actual Sonic.exe exists. Earthbound. Earthbound has a massive fan base, and it's apparent why. This NES game is considered a masterpiece by its fans, with funny, witty writing, a lovable cast of characters, and its innocent, loving world, right? Well, that's until you get to the Gygas boss. At first, you may notice that you're walking up to this random set of tubes. But after further inspection, it looks a lot like a woman's uterus. This in itself is a rather huge change to the cute setting and the characters we are used to. But what we have seen so far is not even the worst to come. The boss Gygas is freaking scary as hell compared to the rest of the world. Now if we inspect it further. The negative space of the boss actually looks like a fetus, and there is a reason for that. After an interview with the head developer of Earthbound, he said when he was a child, he went to a movie theater and walked in on the wrong movie. The movie he walked in on was none other than The Policeman and The Dismembered Beauty. According to the dev, this scared him. 
and it gave him the idea for this game. Even earlier in the game, you may notice that there is a part of Earthbound where Ness is attacked by police officers. This actually mirrors a case in America, where police brutality was frequent and common. Overall, the Gygas being an aborted fetus and all the creepy imagery that is seen is supposed to tell the tale of how Ness and the developer lost their innocence as a child so early on by being thrown into a cruel and unjust world. This is why it continues to scare gamers to this day. And finally, the number one creepypasta. Ben Drowned the Ben Drowned Creepypasta has a unique feature to it. This creepypasta has actual footage of the game and a story that connects the videos together. While the gameplay shows the footage of the glitchy and messed up Nintendo 64, the creepypasta explains the player's reactions and how he felt with the haunted Majora's Mask cartridge. This is by far one of the scariest creepypastas out there, with its format of WMV and the fact that it's hard to tell if it's fake or not, as well as the overwhelming evidence that suggests it's real makes it extremely hard to tell. Another fact that adds more realism to this creepypasta is that if you ask Cleverbot if he knows what happened to Ben, sometimes he responds with, Ben drowned or other generally creepy things. This leads and begs the question, was that cartridge really cursed? Did Ben really drown? And is he really out there today? That's for you, the reader, to decide. And that's why it makes our list. Cat's Top Videos would like to wish all of you a happy, safe, but mostly scared-filled Halloween.